Hello, how are you? I thought I would squeeze in just a few more books before the end of the year and I have some very special and exciting ones uh, to talk about and that I'm eager to read. Uh, so I'm going to get into those, uh, but also I have a brand new camera. Uh, I was slightly worried about turning this on that you might be able to see all the cracks and fissures on my crumbling face. Uh, so let me know if you think the, the picture quality and sound are any better or if they're just sort of the same for you. I Maybe nothing is really changed all that much. I don't know. <laughs> so uh, so first off, I have a very exciting uh, poetry book, chat book to show you uh, called A Place More Hospitable by Booktube's own Jason Purcell. Uh, so if you've been watching YouTube uh, videos about books for a long time, you will know Jason Purcell's channel. Uh, I'll link it below. He hasn't posted a video in quite a while because uh, he's opened a bookshop in Canada. And uh, so he got in touch with me recently uh, and very kindly offered to send me um, his chat book, uh, which is uh, poetry about illness and uh, the stomach, teeth, and feeling away from home in one's own body. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to, to reading this. He's such like a sensitive and kind soul and really intelligent and um, so yeah I'm really eager to see what his poetry is like and also since he has a bookshop he very kindly uh, sent me a t-shirt you know I love my new uh, t-shirts uh, so I'll uh, actually I'll get up and go around and, and show you to give you the full effect of this t-shirt <laughs> here you go it says this book launch is cancelled 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 at the glass bookshop <laughs> and that just summarizes 2020 doesn't it so I'll post links below to Jason's channel and the glass bookshop website uh, if you want to find out more and also you can order books online from them. Uh, also a while ago which I've been meaning to show is I bought a copy of Nigella's new cookbook Cook, Eat, Repeat and I've been uh, I as always whenever I get a new cookbook I like see so many recipes that I want to try out and make and I usually end up only making one or two. I think that's sort of the common experience of uh, getting new cookbooks uh, but, uh, but I do intend to make more and one recipe I did make was her new chocolate banana bread recipe. I'd always made Nigella's banana bread recipe before where you soak sultanas in rum uh, while then putting them in the batter um, before baking the banana bread. And I really like that recipe. I think it's from Domestic Goddess. Um, but this is a new chocolate tahini uh, bread recipe. It is, yeah, yeah chocolate tahini. Um, and, um, and you can actually make it two ways. So you can make it as a bread uh, or you can make it as a pudding. So you can see it in its two forms here. And mine didn't look that pretty. Um, when it, I'd sort of, I, I didn't have any sesame seeds. Um, so I put some Nigella seeds on top because that seems Seemed appropriate and uh, yeah it tasted very good I mean it still had that sort of like earthy uh, feel of banana bread but it was a, you know real indulgence it was very chocolatey and uh, very Moorish I couldn't I had to really resist to stop from eating half of the entire loaf right after I made it and uh, but yeah there's a number of different recipes on this that I'm hoping to make although there's a whole section about anchovies and I don't like anchovies so I won't be making anything from that and she realizes it's a controversial ingredient, uh, but she really loves it. And so she did a whole section about it. And also I've been uh, watching the BBC series that goes along with this new book. And I'm part of the pleasure of watching a new Nigella series is just to see the new turns of phrase she'll come up with to describe her, her cooking or the ways she'll pronounce uh, certain words. I mean, I'm so obsessed with the way she pronounced the word microwave in this new series. I'll show you a clip of it so you can see what I'm talking about. You still need a bit of milk, full fat, which I've warmed in the microwave. I don't think anyone has pronounced microwave like that ever before, but going forward, I think we should all pronounce microwave that way. Uh, so yeah, I'm really enjoying that. Uh, it's just like a pleasure, you know, real indulgence to, to watch a new Nigella series. Uh, so next up, I have a number of new books and uh, I have a new, what's described as a novelette, um, which is a really cute way of describing a uh, story which is between a short story and a novella. And uh, so it's quite short. I think it's only like 60, yeah, 65 pages long. Uh, it's called You Ruin It When You Talk, uh, which is a great title by Sarah Manville. And uh, it's about sort of modern, relate, trying to find love 
of in the modern world and online dating and all of that stuff. And as someone who has been in a relationship for over 21 years, the idea of getting back into the dating scene sort of terrifies me and sort of navigating that that whole landscape. So I'm, I'm eager to read about it, but I, I wouldn't want to experience it myself. I feel very lucky to be with my wonderful partner. So, uh, but, but yeah, um, I think this will be really interesting to read about. I also have another very small book, uh, which you could describe, I guess, as a pocketbook, uh, which is an essay called Radical Attention by Julia Bell. And this is all about the, the online economy, how uh, our attention has become a commodity. And uh, obviously, there are so many things uh, online that give us uh, entertainment and information, uh, but also there is a price to pay for this. And so she's sort of examining uh, that whole issue. And Julia Bell is actually a former teacher of mine. I took a creative writing class by her a very long time ago at the University of East Anglia. And um, yeah, so it's, it's wonderful to see um, she has new publications coming out. Next, the wonderful people at Dialogue Books sent me an advanced copy of the debut novel, You Exist Too Much by Zaina Arafat. Uh, this is all about a young Palestinian American woman who's navigating queerness and addiction to love and tumultuous relationships, uh, both in America and in the Middle East. Uh, so this is a debut novel I'm really eager to read. I have another new book in the very exciting Revolutionary Women series uh, put out by Gallic Books. Uh, these are a series of books by French feminists. And this book is called The Woman and the Wolf and Other Stories by Renee Vivian, uh, translated by Carla J and Yvonne M. Klein. So these are short stories which are kind of a blend of myth and fairy story and biblical tales uh, to tell stories of strong women who stand up for themselves. It sounds sort of like a precursor, a very early precursor to Angela Carter. Um, these were written in the early 1900s. Uh, so yeah, very eager to read these. A new anthology called Lucifer Over London, A Guide to the Adopted City. This is a series of nine essays uh, by these authors all about the migrant and immigrant experience in London. And something I love about living in London is that it is made up of so many different people. Everyone has their own experience of this city. Uh, so I love reading about other people's accounts of living in London. And also at the end of this anthology, uh, there's a group of photographs showing a sort of modern day London and uh, yeah, commenting on modern day London experience. Next, I have a couple of Japanese novels, uh, one a classic Japanese novel and then a modern Japanese novel. So uh, first there is The Hanjin Murders by Seshi Yokomizo, translated by Louise Heal Kawai. And this is a classic Japanese murder mystery story. I think it was published in the early 1900s and has a beautiful cover. It takes place in a small Japanese village where a grand wedding is going to happen, uh, but a strange masked man is sort of lurking around the village. And then one night a terrible murder takes place and a bloody samurai sword is found stuck in the snowbank outside of a uh, house of this family. So uh, yes, a beautiful new edition. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just curious to read a sort of like Japanese murder mystery. There's no such thing as an easy job by Kukiku Sumara and it's translated from the Japanese by Polly Barton. So this is about a young woman who wants to find a job that requires very little thinking or effort. And so she's uh, given a series of menial jobs. One of them is like watching surveillance uh, footage, but she doesn't even really have the attention span to do those jobs. So she keeps getting fired from them and uh, having to find new jobs. It's meant to be somewhat like uh, my year of rest and relaxation or convenience store woman. It's sort of likened to, to those books. And uh, yeah, it's a debut novel. And uh, this is obviously an advanced copy. So 
this is what the finished copy looks like. There's a beautiful sunny new edition of The Stone Diaries by Carol Shields and it comes with a new forward by Margaret Atwood and I've never read this novel before. I've read some of Carol Shields fiction before and really loved it. I, I love her book Unless and I've wanted to, to read more and I know this is hugely praised. It, it won the Pulitzer Prize for fiction and it was nominated or maybe it won the, the Women's Prize for fiction. I can't remember. Did it? I, I don't know. Uh, but anyway, it's, it's about a woman's life, a so-called ordinary woman's life in Canada, and it follows the course of her life uh, through marriage and widowhood and motherhood and old age over the, the course of a century. And uh, it's slightly crinkled because uh, my partner read this, so the spine is broken now. So he just read this recently, um, and I'm really eager to get to it too. And also at the very beginning of the book, there is a family chart and I love it when there's a family chart at the beginning of a novel you know I love family stories and I love seeing those stories you know going through the generations and so you know I always get so excited when I see that at the beginning of a novel so yes I'm very eager to to read this. I had to pause for a minute because my voice keeps cracking and uh, luckily my, my partner just came in and made me a cup of tea so uh, that's really lovely. So uh, next I have another reprint of a classic novel, a really beautiful new edition by Virago Books, and that's Black Narcissus uh, by Rumor Godden, and it comes with a new introduction by Amanda Ko. And I've never read this before, uh, but it sounds so intriguing. So it takes place in a palace in the Himalayas, a palace that was created for a general's harem, uh, but uh, now it is populated by nuns who have created a nunnery and a charitable organization there, but they find that in the course of their isolation uh, that repressed desires uh, sort of emerge and uh, yeah that sounds so intriguing and I think it was also made into a film uh, starring Ingrid Bergman uh, wasn't it but I've never seen the film either so I'd be really eager to read this and then finally watch uh, that classic film as well. Also by Virago Books are the collected short stories of Shirley Hazard. Uh, these are both her published and unpublished stories all together in one collection and it comes with a new forward by Zoe Heller uh, who wrote Notes on a Scandal and I've never read Shirley Hazard before. I I've always wanted to. I know she's written some very acclaimed novels like The Transit of Venus and The Great Fire and I've always wanted to so I think that a good way into testing out her fiction or sort of getting into her fiction is to read some of her short stories so I'm eager to read these. I know they're, they're set in a wide range of places from the suburbs of Connecticut to uh, rural Italy um, because Shirley Hazard herself lived all over the world and led a very interesting life and uh, yeah so I think that sounds really great. And finally I have the novel 337 by M. Jonathan Lee. Uh, there's another writer just called Jonathan Lee but this writer uh, is called M. Jonathan Lee and this novel is about two brothers whose mother uh, leaves fairly early on in their lives and they don't know what's happened to her but one of the brothers um, when he becomes an adult tries to track her down and he quizzes their grandmother about what happened to her and their grandmother is fairly late on in her life and so he wants to record her her story and her memories uh, before she dies so it's about that process and I think it's told in a kind of inventive style where um, the narrative kind of switches up and changes so towards the end of the book um, it takes this different form and the the text goes upside down and yeah so and I like kind of tricksy novels like that that do interesting things with their their narratives so those are all the books I'm going to talk about uh, let me know if you've read any of these books um, or if you're interested in reading any of them now uh, we can have a chat down in the comments below let me know if you're watching Nigella's new series as well or if you tried out any recipes from it um, that'll be fun to to know so I hope you're doing well and reading good things I'll speak to you again soon Bye-bye.